Well, I'll probably be doing this in a wheelchair, so. Mel here from Love This City TV. I am so grateful that Inner Circle Agency brought Ken Shamrock, the most dangerous man in the world, here to speak to me. So, welcome to Toronto. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, for sure, you know, JT and Paul and Rasta for the Inner Circle Agency, uh, they brought a, quite a bit of uh, some superstars here today. So it's really a, it's a blessing for me to be here with these guys and be down here, uh, uh, being able to sign autographs and meet all the fans. So it's definitely a blessing for me. And so it's, it's, it's nice to be here and do an interview with you also. Beautiful, look how beautiful she is. Wow. I have to be honest, since you are the most dangerous man in the world, I thought I would take it on to myself to be the most dangerous woman in the world and I actually fought that alligator earlier that's why my hair is a little bit wet but I don't know but now I'm next to you and I don't know if I can take you on well listen you won't have to because I'm just a big old teddy bear I'm not really all that dangerous only when I get into the ring other than that I'm just a big old teddy bear so can you tell us a little bit about the, your whole history of being in WWF WWE uh, UFC well I tell you it was it, transitions happen well it, First, I started out when I was, you know, I don't know, 20-something years old, and I was in Morrisville, North Carolina, so it was way before the UFC ever came around, and I was doing pro wrestling for a while, but nothing really ever happened of it, and then I got a chance to go over to Japan and actually fight in a pank race organization, which is really the first MMA organization that actually started up, and uh, so I fought over there for about two and a half years and became the world champion over there, and then around that same time, the UFC popped up, and uh, they were looking for applications, and because I was a champion, over in Japan with this kind of mixed martial arts type fighting they were looking for different types of fighters coming from different backgrounds and when I submitted my application they uh, looked at it and they looked at some tapes and they said yeah that's what we're looking for at the time I think Hoist Gracie was probably the only one in there that really had any grappling ability whatsoever on the ground everybody else was on the you know basically a stand-up fighter or a wrestler or a judo guy and uh, me and Hoist were really the only ones that understood the submissions and uh, of course we've seen how that all worked out with the feud between me and Hoist and, and us dominating the MMA world during that time because of our submission skills. A lot of people obviously idolize you because of your, your big background in so many different uh, genres of fighting. Um, why don't you share with us some, some health and fitness that things that you do when you're training? Yeah, usually, uh, I don't know, about 12 o'clock at night time, I'll get up and eat a gallon of ice cream. And then in the morning time, I'll get up and I'll probably eat spaghetti, maybe, uh, I don't know, some popcorn, depending on what's out. <laughs> and that's no lie, too, I do. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, I, there are times that you can do that. I, I'm one of those kind of people who really think it's silly when you see somebody who goes so in-depth to try and stay fit and they never, ever go off their diet. Listen, you, you, it's okay. you got to enjoy life every now and then or otherwise, uh, which you see happen a lot when people really try to lose all that weight and they try to stay fit. What ends up happening after two or three or four or ten years that they do this, um, they'll go off the wagon and they'll, they'll, they'll go in the other direction because they get so depressed uh, because they never get to really enjoy life much. They never get to go out and have popcorn and Coke and have a, a cake or a pie or things of that nature. Me, I think there's always a happy medium to what you can do during the week. It's not constantly being fit. It's constantly eating the right foods, doing the right things, and every now and then treating yourself to something nice. And what do you give uh, anyone of the young kids who want to get into MMA or any kind of fighting, what are some words of advice for them? Stay in school, get your education, and then you can do whatever you want. When you're fighting, do you get very, very, very sore muscles when you're just working it to the bone? Absolutely not. In fact, is I enjoy the pain. Okay, but when you enjoy that pain, isn't it nice when you're kicking it, relaxing, and you can soothe it with a little bit of muscle care? <laughs> Only if somebody's putting it on me. All right, enjoy this. This is a gift from you. Well, thank muscle you. care. Muscle care, baby. Hey Ken, are you ready for this? I'm going to go head to head with you because I'm in my six inch heels right now. We are face to face. And I'm going to ask you some very personal questions and you got to answer them as quick as you can. Are you ready for this? Not very fast, so we'll do this. All right. I'm, I'm actually really slow, but hey, let's try this. Let's try this. Favorite airline? Southwest. Who would you fight if you could fight anyone right now in UFC? Hoist Gracie. Who would you fight if you could fight anyone right now in WWE? Brock Lesnar. If you could fight any animal in the world, which animal would it be? Lion. If you could fight any girl in the world, what girl would it be? None. 
<laughs> you don't want to fight me. I was going to take you right now. Oh, yeah, but see, <laughs> fight, no. Wrestle, yes. Okay, wrestle. If you could wrestle any girl in the world, what girl would it be? You. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite car? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, Camaro. Do you prefer land or water? Land. <laughs> land. Oh, if you could be a Ninja Turtle, what Ninja Turtle would you be? Raphael. Yeah, what's your favorite food? Oh, it's got to be sushi. Yeah. Who is your favorite agency that travels you around Canada? Inner Circle Agency. Inner Circle Agency. All right. That was it. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Hi, Bob. Yeah. Ken Shamrock, people. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Prada. Favorite airline? Air Canada. If you could wrestle anyone right here, right now, who would it be from WWE? Uh, I, can I curse on this? Oh, absolutely. But if you're a fucking douchebag, you last about three weeks in our business.